let's say Dear Shandy is is the universe of Q and A's. <laughs> okay. This question is the singularity inside a black hole. <laughs> Welcome back to Dear Shandy, listeners. Hello, Andy. Hello. How are you today? I'm doing okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm doing just okay. Exactly okay. We're recording this on a Monday morning, so, you know, yeah. Monday feels. It's as good as it's going to get. Yes. Okay, well, there's no better way to start off the week than answering our Shandy's cues. Shall we get a Yeah, let's get to it. I genuinely believe doing these puts us in a better mood. All right, this first question is from Anonymous. <laughs> Dear Shandy, I love your podcast and I religiously watch every episode as soon as it is uploaded. Thank you, Anonymous. Oh. Thank you so much for answering our questions. My question is, is my boyfriend's friendship weird or am I just not as open-minded? I, 25 female, have been dating 29 M, male, for three months now in a small city in Virginia and we are exclusive. He is funny, charismatic, talkative, attentive, and overall things have been going well. How However, this is the first friendship that I have been in where the guy has way more female friends than male friends. He has multiple female friends, six or seven, as well as exes that he talks to regularly at least once a week. I'd like to mention that all of his female friends do not live in the same state that we are in, so he is unable to meet up with them. One of his female friends, Kay, he is particularly close with and texts every day and engages in long, hours long, phone calls at least once a week. He has lived with her her for a year has taken a month-long trip with her where they've shared a room before we started dating and he constantly brings her up in almost every conversation. He also talks to Kay about me a lot and sometimes asks her for advice on our relationship slash conflicts which makes me a little uncomfortable sometimes as I am a very private person. I've asked my boyfriend if he has ever considered dating any of his female friends and he has mentioned that he used to have a crush on one of them not Kay but she had rejected him. He also has another female friend that he meets up with once a week that is interested in him, but he is not, and she has recently moved out of state for a job. However, he has never mentioned wanting to date Kay, but has said that, quote, Kay has very high standards and only dates CEOs, unquote. <laughs> Is my boyfriend's volume of female friendships weird or is this normal? Also, where do the boundaries lie in terms of discussing your significant other with your opposite sex friends? Thank you so much, Anonymous. <laughs> do you have thoughts on this one? I have some thoughts. They're brewing. Yeah. I, I mean, I know which direction I'm going. Okay. I think I know what direction you're going in. Yeah. Do you want to go I'm pretty first? sure we're on the same page with this one. We'll see. Well, you go first. Well, I think it's fine. Yeah, I think it's fine too. But with caveats that I'm brewing on. Yes. So if you have thoughts, totally. please go ahead. I actually think it speaks to more of a positive thing than a negative thing. And of course, there's always, like you said, a caveat. There could be a scenario in which maybe he's not telling Anonymous everything. But I think it's, A, a lovely thing when a guy has female friendships. Yeah. And doesn't only see the opposite sex it, as... It, it actually says a lot. Yeah. You want that. Yeah. You would much rather have a guy who is open about having many female friends mm -hmm. who he potentially confides with and about you. Yeah. Well, that's the one thing that I'm a little... Okay, you keep going. But, but <laughs> now you, I was in the middle of a Of but. your caveat. Yeah. Now <laughs> okay. the butt doesn't have as much impact. I'm sorry. Oh, no. So it wasn't a butt. It was a rather than. Oh. <laughs> and which is even worse. Now it's completely dead. Okay. But you'd rather have that uh -huh. than someone who like you find out, oh, he has actually been talking to one girl who's his only friend, yeah. and you didn't know about it. Yes. I'd much rather have the guy who has a, a, a veritable harem of women friends. <laughs> yeah, the one thing that I would also be slightly, I don't even want to say perturbed, but it was something that I would, I think, kind of raise an eyebrow ever so slightly at, is the fact that he's getting advice on his relationship with Anonymous from Kay. However, you have to assume Kay's been around much longer than Anonymous has. They've only been dating three months. If this were three years in, I might feel differently. There comes a point where I think the significant other is in the, what's what's the front seat in a car? The front seat? No. Oh, the, the passenger seat. Yeah, but what's it called? It's the like, driver's seat? No, it's the like I'm- Shotgun. Yes. <laughs> nice. 
<laughs> yeah, there comes a point where your significant other is shotgun in the car. You're no longer in the back seat while the friendships, which, you know, granted have stood the test of time and have been around a lot longer, but there comes a point where you have to graduate to that oh, point. I agree. If they've been dating for many years yeah. and he's still basically getting all his kind of relationship talk out with his friend, yeah. that would be weird. But as I've said in previous Q and A's, I believe the first six months of a relationship is pretty much within the warranty. Mm -hmm. Like anything kind of can go in the first six months. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, even in our relationship, I believe in the first six months you were confiding with your totally male friends probably more than me on our relationship. I don't know about male or female friends. Friends. Yeah, and I just happen to you know I have a handful of really close male friends, but. Not where I'm confiding like this, but I don't think there's anything wrong with it being the opposite sex. No. I no. think you actually, with a couple of your close female friends, were probably confiding in the, in them about me. I was so confident in you, I didn't need to. Oh, no. Oh, no. I did that. Oh, I no. trapped you. <laughs> Why did you do that? Sorry. We were about to wrap this sorry, really quick, sorry, easy sorry, question. Sorry, I take that back. I, I was, uh, yes, a lot of confiding. Uh, everything seems so open, like... It's like, oh, yeah, I talked to Kay about you and about how to deal with like conflict with you, with with my friend Kay. I think the one thing that she's right to be a little like mm, about is the privacy thing and feeling like I don't really want us being discussed. However, like you said, this is still within the six month warranty. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's established enough. I know they're exclusive, but I don't think this relationship is established enough for her to wave the shotgun card. I agree. And I do think that she should really see the benefits that she's getting from being with a guy who is in touch with his feminine side. Yeah. Wow. And maintains friendships with long phone calls. Yeah. I like that. It may seem counterintuitive, but it is good to be dating a guy who has female friends. Agreed. All right, Anonymous. So there are caveats. Yeah. But in general, we think this is a good thing and that your boyfriend's friendship is not weird. <laughs> That's the title. Unless, unless he has a friend who's trying to sabotage her. Oh, why do Sorry. you keep doing that? Sorry. We're about to wrap. I know, I know. My bad. <laughs> no, it's true. Maybe Kay has some secret crush, but, you know, it doesn't yeah. sound like the boyfriend's it, it, a CEO. <laughs> no, it's just not. <laughs> okay, That's her saving grace. <laughs> All right, Anonymous, good luck. I don't think you need it. No. All right, this next question is from E as in the letter. Oh, E. Mm -hmm. As in the letter. Yeah. As opposed to the name E. E. No, there's no E. No, you're right. There's no word E either. Unless it's like you see a spider. <laughs> is is that, the, that the sound you make when you see a spider? You mean the E. Yeah, E. Yeah, but then there's still a K, an eek. Oh, that's the comic book version. But yeah. if I saw a big spider that came out of nowhere, I, I would say E without no, a K. No, you don't say E. When you see a big spider or a cockroach, you go, ah! That's true. How do you spell that? <laughs> Hi, Charlene and Andy. You both always have such great takes, and I'm usually not one to write in and ask for advice, but this situation of mine seems really up your alley to answer, so here it goes. I'm curious to know yeah, what's, what's our alley. Yeah, what is our I alley? I want to know it. My boyfriend and I have been together for over four years and have lived together for three. We've lived in small apartments in the past, but last year we upgraded to a three-bedroom townhome that, in all honesty, is still not enough room for the both of us and our two pets, though we would both agree that we share each of the three rooms pretty equally, meaning we both freely have access to each space, even each other's offices. My boyfriend has mentioned several times that if we were to buy or rent a house, he wants to have a room in the house where I am not allowed in. I've always been a bit bothered by this, but thought, hey, if we have a house big enough, sure. Just recently, he was very explicit that when we get said house, he will get a lock for the door and not give me a key so that he knows for certain I will not go in without his permission. <laughs> we have always organically... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was looking forward to seeing your expression and it was exactly what I expected it to be. I, I could tell that your interest was piqued by that last yeah, I sentence. Think this is upper alley. She knows us better than we know ourselves. Yeah. We have always organically shared our possessions, phone passwords, car keys, etc. before, so I never anticipated he would have such a hard rule on having his own space. He is definitely the artist type and can be neurotic about worrying people will interrupt him unannounced when he's concentrating. I've told him that I will respect his boundaries and he knows 
knows I've never intentionally disrespected them in the past. I can't seem to get across to him why having a locked door in my own home is super uncomfortable for me, and I'm struggling to put into words why it is so weird to me and he doesn't seem to be able to see my side. Am I being unreasonable? Should he have a right to a room in a home that we share? Hope I've shared enough background for this scenario to make sense, smiley face. Thank you, love you. Sincerely, no one keeps baby out of a corner, E. Ah, nice. <laughs> well, I will say I feel very seen by this question. Yeah, yeah. Because she's right. But I don't really think I know everything I need to know about him or about their relationship. But I... Wait, what do you think's missing? I mean, she did not give ages, which is pretty crazy. It's up our alley to complain about not having ages. <laughs> so maybe it was a meta up our alley. This is what I'm going to say. There's two possibilities here because he's not like seeing other girls in that room. It's not like he's like having affairs. So that's out of the question. Yeah, but it begs the question, what is okay. so, what is he so secretive okay. about that he needs a lock? Okay. The lock is what gets can I, me. Can I just, can I, can I? I'm sorry. Okay. I, I clearly have a strong opinion. No, I know opinion you have a strong opinion. I, I, I don't totally agree with you. Great. People will love it. There are two possibilities here. Neither, well, actually, sorry, one is very nefarious, although it technically doesn't have anything to do with the relationship. And that being that he's like some kind of a, a, a serial killer. Or, <laughs> yeah. or, or, that's option number one. That's option number one. It's, a, you know, it's, it's the whole serial killer umbrella, okay. which includes like, you know, doing illegal pedophile, yeah. like anything really something you do not want other people involved in yeah, yeah, yeah. for legal reasons. Yeah. That's number one. Very, very outside possibility. Okay. Possible. It, I, sure. But I don't think that's it. Let's uh -huh. just assume that's not it. Well, it makes it more likely the fact that he needs a lock on it. I understand. It. It is. That's definitely, what makes it weird. It adds up that that could be the thing. Yes. It could be that he's a deviant criminal. Uh huh. That's number one. And I'm going to say that's a long shot okay. just because the percentage of people in the country who desire a room to themselves and are also serial killers or pedophiles is not a high percentage. <laughs> I would assume that's a low percentage. Okay. What is it? Five percent of people who demand a room to <laughs> you, themselves. You lost me somewhere along the way, but get to the other thing. Yeah, I, Wait, it's either or. Okay. What was the other one? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. The other one is, is that he needs a 100 percent guaranteed isolated space for himself to create whatever art mm -hmm. he's involved in. Yeah. And I think that is the odds on money winner for why he wants this. And I'm surprised he hasn't come right out and just told her that because that would sort of solve a lot. And I wouldn't be surprised if he did, but she didn't mention that, that she's alluded to it, Yeah, which is enough for me. I think that that's what it is. I think that he is a real, whether he's a good artist or a crappy artist, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. He believes in his art enough that he wants his space that is uninterrupted. There's not a chance. If there's a fire in the house, that door is not getting unlocked. And that's how he needs to create his art. And I respect that. I mean, you know, that, that's fine. Hmm. Or he's a serial killer pedophile, <laughs> which is not fine. Ah, uh, this one's complicated. This one's deceptively difficult. Because my first read, I was like, hey, that's weird. Yeah. Like. Oh, it's weird. I think it's the lock that gets me. And look, I'm all about, you know, there's this new trend where people are having separate bedrooms so you can have your own personal space. I like the idea of having separate bedrooms. So I guess for me, it just feels unfair. Like if she also got her own locked private room that he's not allowed in, what is he doing in there that she cannot possibly even, like it'd be one thing if it's like, oh, don't disturb me while I'm being a creative genius. It's another thing where it's like, there's a lock on here you're never allowed in. Right. I'm gonna be out and you're still not allowed in there. What the hell is he doing well, in that room or keeping in that room or storing in that room? Or, you know, I just think that it's a little suspicious. Well, I think that if he were to say, when I'm in there, you don't disturb me. Yeah. And when I'm not in there, it's just a room yes, in the house that you can stroll into. Oh, that is so that's different. And she said yeah. she's tried to make it clear that she respects his boundaries. And if he doesn't want to be disturbed, she'll never do it. And she said she's never knowingly disturbed him. Right. I think that that would be fine. Like in that case, it's just a room that I don't want to be disturbed in when I'm working. And like you can even put a do not disturb sign on it. Oh, my God. That's what they should do. I do not disturb Yeah, but you can't be, I, I respect the the concept of be feeling guaranteed that no one's going to interrupt you. Like what if she has like, you know, something happened, like, 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 like the nuclear bomb dropped somewhere 
And she's running in, be like, you got to, you got to go to the basement. There's a nuclear war. Yeah, but war. in that case, like, you want to be interrupted. No, he doesn't. He, Emergencies only. It, it, it has. To, it's the concept of like knowing that when you're engaged in something, there's no chance in the world you're being interrupted. I'm trying to have some grace for him in this scenario. I'm assuming that it's not just creative genius stuff that maybe when he was young, he didn't have his own room or maybe he, he was walked in on or like he didn't have privacy. And then that's why he's as hell bent on having this as he is. But I have to admit, like E, I would have a problem with this. I also would have a problem with it. Yeah. If I lived with you in this situation. <laughs> okay. I would. I, I, I'm being, I'm playing a little bit devil's advocate here. Okay. I think, there is a legitimate chance that he's a serial killer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's the conclusion. I'm starting to th- I'm starting to think about it. Okay, look, I know I'm being I'm being a little facetious with serial killer, but but seriously, a like little. <laughs> a little, not a lot, a little. This really smells fishy. Like not in a good, not in a way like this has nothing to do with their relationship. I actually think that that this is not she can be rest easy that their relationship is good i think she should be concerned about what's going on in that room that's what i'm saying right i don't think this Wait, is am about, i converting you yeah you're i'm slightly okay I, it's not that you're converting me i'm moving like my serial killer pedophile was down here and and just art artistic privacy is up here and now it's like like here the lock on the door is what gets me it's the lock on the door. Well, is it like a she thing, cannot like, walk in the door in her own house that she paid 50%, presumably. I mean, she didn't talk about the finances and how they split it, but it, it's assumed that they are getting the place together. This is literally the setup for a horror movie. <laughs> I mean, at night, she finally, you know, she waits till he's asleep. She Maybe she gives him some extra, you know, I, sleep meds and it, she just goes up in the dark house and she like picks the oh lock and she always is like, oh my God. <laughs> What's in there? I don't know. And let's hear the soundtrack for that. I was going with. I, yeah, it would be. It would probably be that or. <laughs> oh my! That sounds like dun dun dun. No, that's too Mario. You know, no, you know what they do nowadays. No, no, that's not no, scary. That's, that's a video game for kids. Oh, well, it's the ghost house. You know what they do now? They do very low frequency, like almost like a, a held tuba note where it's just like. Oh, oh yeah. No, that's very on trend right there. <laughs> okay. It just keeps going. Oh, yeah. Like and then it gets louder as she notices yeah. that one of the floorboards like is a little mismatched from the others. Or oh, it looks but like as it's- <laughs> she's about to go go grab it from behind her, it's just oh, you, no! you get a jump scare. Oh, no! What are you doing? <laughs> what are you looking for? Oh, no. Did you lose something? Oh, no, stop. I can't handle horror movies. I told you I wanted a locked room. <laughs> I told you I didn't want you coming in here. Okay, we're, we're jumping to conclusions. Yeah. I'm interested to see what the Shanties think of this one. Yeah. Because I can see some people being like, full privacy, there's nothing wrong with that. What I want from the boyfriend in this scenario is a more clear cut, reason why it needs to be only his she cannot set foot inside the door is locked she, she's not allowed in there whether he's there or not whether he's working or not whatever what are what's happening i think she should demand a peek i think she should say <laughs> look just one peek yeah. one good a good peek not like <laughs> not like he opens the door an inch and he's like okay that's enough i want to just get a good like a perimeter just a, a peruse mm-hmm. and that's it she's like i'm good Oh, give me a As break. Were, no. All the stuff that's that's interesting or incriminating is inside drawers. Okay, maybe one full <laughs> inspection. <laughs> I've never been more in the middle on something. Oh, wow. It's binary for me. It's literally, it's a, it's like this is either something she, she should talk to the FBI about uh-huh. or I just think it's a it's an erotic artist type who mm. needs a space. Can she bring it to a head and be like, I don't like this? Yeah. I, I don't want you to have this. Yeah. And well, see what think, see okay, how he reacts. That's a good point. We should bring this around instead of talking about all those scenarios it could be. E, I think what we're saying is that we think you're not wrong or weird. No. Or misguided not weird. to be feeling a little like mm, about this. Yeah, this is weird. Yeah. This is definitely weird. I mean, we're one hundred percent weird. I'm not denying that. Mm-hmm. But I think there could be a silver lining. Bring it to a head. See how he reacts. That will tell. Oh, how yeah. he reacts will tell. If he gets really weird about it, yeah. then you might want to talk to the FBI. <laughs> okay. 
All right, E. Sorry. I, I feel like she probably hoped that we would just be like, oh, ha, ha, ha. It's no big deal. No, but this is a big deal. Would, this, could, this guy could be like the second coming of Kaczynski. Okay. It could be also totally innocent and nice that he just wants his own private space. Yeah. But all I can say, E, is that this would also bother me and I would bring it to a head if yeah. I were you. Yeah. Bring it to a head. And you know how bad she'll feel if she goes in there? One of these, like, fine. Go into the room. Go ahead. See, see what's in there. And all it is just these beautiful portraits of her all over the place. <laughs> And a dead hooker. <laughs> okay, E, good luck. You really may need it. Rocket money is rocketing money. Rocket money. <laughs> Andy, you've brought back an OG jingle. Yeah, I really like that jingle. Me too. The rocket money jingle that you invented probably close to a year ago now was one of my all-time favorite jingles of yours. I'm so happy it's back. Oh. I mean, I continue to love rocket money. It is a total game changer for your wallet. Rocket money has become such a required thing, I feel. It's like going to the doctor. It's like getting your annual physical. Yeah. It's just part of life. You don't have to. But you really should be doing yeah, that. Yeah, it reminds me of when you do a clean out of your computer. Rocket Money is that when it comes to your bills, especially your subscriptions. Did you know that 80% of people have subscriptions they've completely forgotten about? It's 80% of people who admitted they do. That survey, they were like, oh, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> It's like, it's a hundred percent. And you sign up for so many things nowadays. I'm signing up for things all the time. Yeah. And I'm not even a signing up kind of guy. <laughs> You're not. But seriously, anything, it could be streaming. It could be fitness programs. And also there are a lot of things I see that I'm like, I don't really want that anymore. Mm -hmm. But I'm just like too busy or too lazy to go cancel it. It's too daunting because oftentimes these companies purposely make it difficult to cancel You don't think that's part of the business model? Oh. They're in that boardroom yeah. and they're like, wait, but what about cancellations? Like, ha, 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 <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Yeah, we'll make that extra fine print on this page in the account settings, whatever, that's super hard to find. Rocket Money makes it easy. They cancel it for you with the touch of one button. And perhaps my favorite feature with Rocket Money is they will negotiate lower bills for you. You take a photo of your bill and send it to Rocket Money and then they'll get to work. That's ridiculous. Amazing. You don't deserve that. This is one of those services where you're getting too much. So much so that the average Rocket Money customer saves $720 a year. $720 a year on average. Yeah. It's not like one of those before and afters where they show the absolute best example that's ever happened in history. Totally. What would you do with an extra $720 a year? It's like 50 rolls of toilet paper. <laughs> So Rocket Money is the personal finance app that helps you find and cancel unwanted subscriptions. Monitors your spending and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Stop wasting money on things you don't even use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions and manage your money the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash shandy. That's rocketmoney.com slash shandy. Rocketmoney.com slash shandy. Okay. Rocket money. <laughs> rocketing money. <coughs> ich bin ein Berliner. <laughs> Okay, that kind of caught me off guard. Yeah. But you really haven't been studying German. No, I have not. You're that's just pretending. Just, that's just, actually, it's something JFK said, and he, and he said it wrong in German. But you know when you wouldn't get it wrong? No. As if you had been studying German using Babbel, the language learning app that you is on your phone. I mean, can you think of a better way to spend time on your phone than to learn a new language? No, it's the best use of a phone. Yes. Other than buying stuff. <laughs> From the you know what you're home. buying in this case is you're buying skill. Babel is giving you more than you deserve. Totally. You should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, people who only just and look, I'm not on my high horse. We all have our days where you're just on your phone mindlessly, killing time. Instead of just scrolling mindlessly and just numbing yourself, you applied yourself to a 10 minute long language lesson. And then you did that every single day. You're telling me that's not gonna make a difference. In fact, with Babbel, you could be having a conversation in your language of choice in as little as three weeks. Yeah, and the best way to learn a language is to immerse yourself. Yes. And not everyone can just immerse themselves in another language. Totally. This is a virtual immersion. Every single day, 10 minutes, that's you're immersing yourself even within your regular day-to-day -day life. Yeah, get your immersion on. <laughs> yeah. With Babel? Get your immersion on with Babel? Is it, are Does you gonna, that work? Are you going to try to yeah, take you that? you want to take that? Go ahead. <laughs> so generous. And one study found that using Babel for 15 hours is the equivalent of studying a full semester at college. That's insane. Insane. How much does that cost? Like $50 million? 
<laughs> so we have a special limited time deal for our listeners, the Shandies. Right now, you can get 55% off your Babbel subscription when you go to babbel.com slash dear Shandy. Get 55% off at babbel.com slash dear Shandy. Spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash dear Shandy. Rules and restrictions may apply. All right. This next question is from Anonymous. Dear Shandy. Can you give me some advice on making friends in my new town? I, 28 female, moved from an East Coast city to a mountain town in Colorado about seven months ago. Mm. I moved here for a job and to fulfill a dream of living in the mountains. I had previously lived in Denver while in school and often thought about what it would be like to live up here. And although I have a number of friends from school still in Denver, I've been finding it hard to make friends in the town where I live. I know that making friends anywhere takes time and can be hard. It was even hard when I moved back to my East Coast Coast City after school, and I already had a social network there. However, there seems to be one major difference that makes finding new friends out here seem harder. Everyone is married. Mm. I'm exaggerating. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I'm exaggerating slightly, of course, but it really does feel like everyone around my age living here is married, or if they're not married, they're engaged, or at least in a serious relationship where they live with their partner. This feels like a huge difference from my social circle back on the East Coast, where most of my girlfriends are single or dating around and only a handful are just starting to get married. We bonded over, among other things, bad first dates and broken hearts, leaning on each other as our primary support systems when talking about the fear and excitement of our uncertain futures. As someone who has been single for years, years, I'm finding it hard to relate to and therefore bond with all these married, married couples. She wrote married twice. I hope that was intentional. Oh, double married. <laughs> <laughs> Super married. <laughs> Super married brothers. Oh my God, we're so super married. We're super married. Yeah. If there's married and then married, married, we're married, married. Yeah, we're like, dun, 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 <laughs> married. On some level, I get it. Why go out for happy hour after work if you can go home and eat dinner with your partner instead, especially if you're tired? On the rare occasion I do end up socializing, I often end up feeling like a third or fifth or seventh wheel. Ooh, that's a lot. That's a big vehicle. <laughs> Although I'm generally quite content with being single, I've never wanted to get married in my 20s and especially now feel like I want to do a lot more exploring the world before I do. Being the extra wheel makes me feel like the odd one out and generally isn't that pleasant of a social experience, even if the people themselves are nice enough. Plus, I feel it doesn't allow you to really get the chance to know someone as people on those situations tend to still be focused on their partner. Mm, that is very true. true. Very I mean, true. It's actually interesting reading this perspective as super married people. <laughs> Because I think she's totally right. <laughs> there should be a super married people game. <laughs> oh, really? Should we make that? Yeah. It That's actually be, a good idea. It'll be fun for, for people a who, video are, who game? are very married. Yeah. Or a board game? Yeah, super married. Obviously, you play on Super Mario. I've already established <laughs> that, but yeah. I think it'd be funny. It'd be yeah. fun. No, that's, that's not a yeah. idea. Okay, and that's the thing. When you're married, instead of playing a game that makes believe you're not married, like Twister yeah. or, so, you know, like Truth or Dare, or let's BS. You're even married. Let's let's take it easy. Yeah. Play a game that focuses on the fact how married you are. Yeah, but then, like, I feel like the third, fifth, or seventh wheel would not no, want to play. No, there's no like non-married people playing. <laughs> yeah. So what we're basically doing is finding another way to exclude anonymous. That's correct. Yeah, this has nothing to do with her question. <laughs> I know from personal experience that when you're satisfied with your social circle, it can be hard to convince yourself to spend the energy to get to know new people outside of that circle. And imagine the lack of social inertia is even greater when you are married. However, I would really love some local friends. As two married people, do you have any advice for navigating this new kind of social dynamic? Love the show. There have definitely been episodes in the past where the advice you gave other people was also exactly the advice I needed to hear. Oh, Aww. nice. And maybe most importantly, Charlene has taught me how to recognize an outfit that needs an updo. Oh, sincerely mm. anonymous. Okay. So there was a main reason I wanted to choose this question because oh. I think, you know, we can start off by saying the usual things like do volunteer work yeah. and find like-minded people or join a club, or go to events, join meetup groups. Oh, I think there's Bumble BFF now. Like you can find friends on Bumble. Oh. Yeah. Mm. So things like that. I'm a big believer, Anonymous, in just saying to people when you when you meet someone that you kind of think you have potential to be friends with, just saying, like, I want to be your friend. Like, can I give you my number? Yeah. And the kind of person that would find that weird and would judge you for that is not the kind of person you'd want to be friends with anyway. And I meanwhile, yeah. like I've made some great friends that way, actually. So just shedding the 
embarrassment or self-consciousness of being like, I like you. I want to be your friend. Oh, totally. Making friends as an adult is really challenging. Yeah. It's bizarre because it makes you feel like you suddenly go back to like the playground when you're like totally. five years old. It's because it doesn't feel adult. Yeah. Everything as an adult should be a, a contract. Totally. You know, you should be like, oh, so we're friends now. Okay, we'll sign here and initial there and <laughs> yeah, sign yeah. here. Yeah, And by the way, I'm a distant friend. I'm going to text you like maybe once every few weeks. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. What level of friendship? Is this a medium contract? Yeah, yeah. Is this a heavy friendship? Is this yeah. the kind of friendship where we cry together and eat ice cream? Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or is this the kind of friendship where we're questioning how to wrap the text conversation or does it just come to yeah. like a screeching halt yeah. with one text? Yeah. Is this an emoji text yeah. conversation or a real text? <laughs> Are we using punctuation? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is this Capitalization. A <laughs> is this a letter K text friendship? The other reason I wanted to choose this is because I wanted to try something fun, which is just, oh, you know, I really wish she'd given her actual city. Maybe people will piece it together. But I wanted to put it out there that if anyone heard this question and lives Colorado in, Springs. Yeah. Lives in a mountain town in Colorado, not in Denver, but near Denver. I'm thinking Colorado and Springs. I mean, anonymous is 28 female. If anyone... I don't know. Email us. Yeah, it's not I, Boulder. It's not? No, I think Boulder's a lot of single people. Or maybe not. I don't know anything about that. Uh, I, I just think Boulder's a big college town. Mm -hmm. Colorado Springs is more... I, I think it's Colorado Springs. Okay. But I, what do I know? I mean, okay. I've only spent like six weeks in Denver. I just feel like Shandies are like-minded people. Mm. And we've thought before about making a sort of friendship app, like an, a Shandy friendship app. Yeah. And sometimes I'll see people like bonding or connecting in the comments and it just makes me so happy. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, if there's anyone who thinks that they might be in Anonymous's area and is also looking for platonic friends, email us and we'll, we'll try connecting. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. What a great idea. That was the reason I chose this question. Oh, really? Because I don't think that I can tell her anything other than stick it out and put yourself yeah. out there, you know. There's, there's nothing that we can bring to this that she doesn't already know. She's been there for seven months, which to me is still early-ish. I know that's a long time, but it's still oh, early-ish to yeah. not to be struggling in that department. Yeah. Also, I want to mention that we have a friend. He's actually the boyfriend of, of a friend of ours, and we've become friends with him. And he is from the East Coast. And he, he his dream had been to live in Denver, and he lived there for a few years. And actually, when he came back, he he had had a hard time making friends. Oh, do you remember yes. that? Yes. Yes. I wonder if that's something to do with Colorado. I don't know. If maybe I'm maligning the entire state. Maybe people don't want to make friends in Colorado. <laughs> or they've just been friends with the same people forever. Yeah. Maybe that's what it is. But I know there are certain types of people who like have their like high school friends. And they're, or, they're friends and they with never, them forever. That's it. Yeah. Like anyone else is an outsider. Yeah. Like work friends, college friends. Everyone is just not as important. We've been friends forever. So we're going to stay tight friends. That's I'm not interested really in new people. It is annoying. Yeah. Grow actually. up. <laughs> <laughs> your high school friends suck. <laughs> no, Cut your that's losses. not necessarily true. Yeah, your high school friends. I have a lot of high school friends. Yeah, you maybe do. I suck. So yeah, just putting this one out there in case there are any Shandies who heard this and they're like, "Oh, I'm looking for a friend." Yeah. Email us. Yeah. Okay. Let's make this happen. All right, anonymous. Sorry, we couldn't give you more, but maybe we will we have will given you, give you more than in the anybody end. <laughs> has ever gotten writing in. All right. Good luck. All right. This next question is from B, as in the letter. <laughs> that works you accept dear shandy i have truly come to adore the podcast and find your perspectives to be so thoughtful and endearing while also delivering tough love when needed thank you b that's thank nice you. that's very nice this is why i'm hoping you'll be able to give some feedback about my current dilemma i am a 29 year old is it dilemma or dilemma i never know i say dilemma is it both are fine probably. i think dilemma is probably more dilemma, accurate. i just like dilemma. saying dilemma dilemma feels more british that's more, like, it's dilemma. I, to me, dilemma suits the word better. Dilemma. Yeah. Dilemma just sounds like, okay, whatever. You know what? Dilemma sounds lazier. It's like dilemma. Yeah. But if you're going to use the word dilemma, you're like, I, ha I, mean, I have a dilemma. You're right. It has more, it, it feels more the impactful. Emphasis yes. Creates more urgency. The emphasis. Yeah. <laughs> I am a 29 year old female and have been single for about two and a half years. My ex and I were together for almost nine years and ended amicably and respectfully as we both came to a sad realization that we had grown apart and had run our course. After spending the last couple of years post breakup feeling very closed off and uninterested in finding a new love or relationship, I am now starting to open up again to the idea of putting myself out there for dating as I have done a lot of introspection and healing. However, a big insecurity 
from my past relationship is holding me back and I'm not sure how to approach it in future relationships. While my ex and I had many good years during our nine year run, we also had a couple of rocky ones. One rocky period in particular happened about four years into our relationship while in our 20s. I was in a very low place mentally and ended up cheating on him with a one night stand while gone on a trip with friends. I came clean to my ex within a few days after getting back in town. The guilt made me physically ill and seeing how much I hurt someone I loved was one of the lowest feelings I had ever experienced. We ultimately decided to stay together and work through our issues at the time and ended up staying together for five more years. I know he still felt a lot of hurt years later, but I did truly believe that he had forgiven me. The shame, however, still follows me around to this day. While I am now self-assured enough to know I will never make that mistake again in future relationships, I worry about the judgment I'm going to face from future potential partners. The phrase, once a cheater, always a cheater, haunts me because I know many people strongly agree with it. I have a two-part question for you. One, what are your thoughts on once a cheater, always a cheater? And two, when is it an appropriate time to reveal something like this from your past in a new relationship? Sincerely, B. That's an interesting question. Mm -hmm. And I can say that it is possible that once a cheater, always a cheater is true mm -hmm. while still not being bad. And, I, and let me explain myself. Uh -huh. I c would compare it to alcoholism. It's like, <laughs> sorry, I don't, and, and now again, now I don't mean to be malign and cheating this much, but alcoholism is something. Wait, wait, some people might be like, don't malign alcoholism. Yeah, right. That <laughs> that's true. Actually, that's true. You know what? Maybe I'm maligning alcoholism more. Okay. Alcoholism. <laughs> alcoholism. Alcoholism is something you have for life, generally speaking. If you really have alcoholism, if you're just like a really heavy social drinker, that's different. If you really have the disease mm -hmm. of alcoholism, you have that for life. Mm. So the day you die, the question is, do you let it beat you or do you just not drink? And a lot of alcoholics who recover and live perfectly fine lives just choose not to drink. And I do to some degree believe that if you cheat, you do have that chip. You have the chip that allows you to say, you know what? I want to do this and I'm in a relationship and I want to do it. Mm. You may regret it badly the next morning or not. Either way, you have that chip. Oh, this is fascinating to hear from you. But yeah, keep going. OK. Uh huh. So I think that, yes, you can put some credence behind the phrase a cheater, always a cheater. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't not cheat or that you're a bad person. Oh, wow. I was not expecting your take to be that at all, at all. And I thought we were on the exact same page about this. Oh. So I disagree that it's something that you carry with you for life and that it's like you have this chip. Because I think that people are different versions of themselves in different relationships. So it's like the version that me, like I've, we've both admitted on this podcast that we have both cheated on p partners and been cheated on by mm -hmm. partners. Not necessarily the same partners, actually. In fact, not the same partners now that I think about it. Right. But I can tell you that I was, the, the relationship in which I cheated, I was like literally a different person. Like, I don't know how else to put that. Yeah. And in it's not just like on a cellular level, like I've grown so much. I mean, in that relationship, the dynamic of that relationship, what that relationship brought out in me and what I brought out in him, all these things created a completely different like ecosystem or environment in which that was something that I could allow myself to do and might not be haunted by in the same sure. way or whatever. And so to me, I very firmly believe that, wait, I don't believe in once a cheater, always a cheater. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. Let's say, let's say we got in some terrible fight or we weren't getting along and uh -huh. you went on some trip and you met a guy who's like, you so attracted to like, this is your perfect guy. There's nothing you want more. And he's like, listen, I'm married. I got kids. This is no strings attached tonight. I got a room. It's a beautiful penthouse uh -huh. room in this hotel. Just one night. Just, I really, I really want to have sex with you. Uh -huh. And that's it. No chance you do that. Why would I do that? Okay. So you're not a cheater. So well, there's no, no chance you do that. But in this relationship? Yeah. Let's say we're having a bad time. Like it's been a month of just not getting along, fights. You're really annoyed with me. You go on this trip. You're a little horned up. It's like, you know, <laughs> it's hot outside. <laughs> but see, even that you're creating a different like scenario, a set of scenarios that 
Do you know what I mean? It's like you're trying to create the perfect situation for a cheating to occur. It's too okay. convoluted. So in like other words, it doesn't you're going you're like going to a party where alcohol is totally free <laughs> and and everyone's drinking and having a great time and it's top shelf. It's like a specialty alcohol party. Uh-huh. And you as an alcoholic are saying, I'm not having a drink. Doesn't interest me. The comparison isn't exactly the same because I think that if you know that you struggle with alcohol, like you maybe would not put yourself in that situation. Right. But you would don't put yourself in that situation because you know you're an alcoholic. Uh huh. Which is what I'm saying is that if you've cheated before, maybe you make the conscious decision not to put yourself oh, in situations well, where you would cheat. Okay. Well, that meaning that you can cheat. Meaning that one's a cheater, always a cheater. And believe me, <laughs> I'm the last person to malign cheaters. Oh. I think there's nothing better than a redeemed cheater. Okay, so I feel like we're coming to the same conclusion by a different routes. Yes, and I think what matters now for Anonymous, B, sorry, B, <laughs> as in the letter, is that <laughs> she is aware. She is not only aware of the fact that she can cheat. She's writing into a podcast about feeling bad about the fact that she can cheat, yeah. which means she's hyper aware of uh -huh. it, which means she is now capable of saying, no, I'm not going to put myself in that situation and I'm just not going to do it because it makes me feel bad and it makes me write into podcasts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what I find interesting about her situation is it happened four years in and then they still dated for another five years. Yeah. So you know, they really went through the the post cheating work. You know, a lot of people might just, that's it. That's the end yeah, of the relationship. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I feel that she has probably learned her the lesson even more than someone who maybe just cheated and never got caught, yes. cheated and never disclosed it, or even cheated and that ended the relationship because she loved this person and he loved her so much that they still made it work for five years afterwards. Yeah. Like she knows how much she loved this person and therefore how much damage she did. Yeah. I would put my money, I would put my entire life savings on B never cheating again. Absolutely. You know what she is? She's Robert Downey Jr. when he did the Iron Man movies. <laughs> it's like that you knew that guy was never having a drink again. Robert uh, Downey Jr., yeah. never having a drink again. I put my money, there's, that man will never touch alcohol again Wait, or drugs. Was he, did he drink? <laughs> You know, <laughs> I, I, you know, if Robert Downey Jr. heard you say that, he'd be a very happy man right now. I tend to be a little clueless about this stuff. No, no, no. But it, it's it's a good thing. It's it's that enough time has passed between him, you know, Iron Man Robert Downey Jr. and drinking Robert Downey Jr. and drugs Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. that people like yourself don't even think of him as a drug addict anymore. But no one was more of a drug addict and an alcoholic than Robert Downey Jr. That man was prodigious. He was in jail several times for oh. drugs. He oh. was a humongous cocaine addict. And and like there's interviews, you could watch interviews like on Letterman or something on TV where you see he's clearly super high oh. in all his interviews. And now he's the straightest lace guy you've ever seen, has the happiest life, is making billions of dollars. Uh. I'm not sure why I'm talking so much about Robert Downey Jr., but my point is, that's what you can strive to. You say, <laughs> I, I now know I'm a cheater and I'm gonna make billions of dollars doing Marvel movies. <laughs> Question answered. Okay. Question two from B was, when is it an appropriate time to reveal something like this in your new relationship? I think you wait a few months. I don't think this is something you lead with, especially if you feel like you've got a handle on it. To be perfectly honest with you, I don't even know if this really ever needs to come up unless it's asked. Uh, I'm torn on this one. Does it really have to? Does she have to be like, I, I need to, does it have to be like one of these, you know, we need to have a conversation Yeah, about my something. issue with this, I know that there are people out there hearing this who might be like, I would want to know if the person I'm starting to date has ever cheated. But I also think it's a lot to ask that someone, especially like in her position, that we're talking a one night stand in her 20s, four years in a relationship, they dated another five after. She's so racked with guilt by it that she's writing into a podcast to talk about it. Is she supposed to tattoo cheater no. on her fucking yeah. forehead for life? Give no, me a break. There is no scarlet letter for cheating once. Give yeah. me a break. Yeah. Do I, do, it's like on the first date, I'm like, well, listen, I, I just have to tell you a few things. I did once use a magnifying glass to incinerate an ant. I stole a <laughs> porno mag when I was 12, yeah. like enough, yeah. just let it go. If, if she's writing into a podcast feels is racked with guilt enough to be at this place, 
You've done the work. Yeah. You don't have to tell people. In general, if there's one thing that we manage to do with this podcast, for me, it would be to discuss cheating in a more open-minded way. And that's not to say that we're ever saying cheating is good. It's just this idea. Like like she herself said, once a cheater, always a cheater haunts her because she knows many people strongly agree with it. And even we've seen that in the comments too. Some people are like, once a cheater, always a cheater. It's just such a black and white way of thinking. And when you consider how many people actually cheat it's way more than you think way more and so are all those people and by the way a lot of them never do it again yeah just was the phrase always once a cheater always a cheater even if there's some credence there is not once a cheater always will cheat yes it's once a cheater always could potentially cheat but can control themselves like a proper (laughs) adult and not cheat that's what the phrase should be like the number of people who have cheated on a relationship at some point in their life is like the number of people who like golf in this country. Like, are we just going to malign everyone who likes golf? I mean. Yeah, I mean, that that actually, is, to me, is more of an offense than cheating. But we could talk about that on another podcast. Okay. I have another question that's like paired with this question. Okay. It's like the other side. Ooh. So do you want to move on? To the other yeah, one? did we finish this? I'm sure people will vehemently disagree and vehemently agree with us I, I on think this. some people are going to be confused as to where we stand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, be good luck. I think you can let the guilt go. Absolutely. You do not need to self-flagellate yeah. until your dying day. Yeah, you, you, you have actually a choice yeah, to yeah, not yeah. cheat. Yeah, and you yourself said that you know you will never do it again. Just lean into that That's more it. so than the the judgment you feel floating your way from people who you haven't even told really, yeah. you know, I think that you might find that there are more people in your boat than you realize. Mm, it's a sinking boat. <laughs> what do you mean? It's too heavy. Too many people in that boat. Oh, I didn't yeah, They need to offload some people into the, under the non-cheating boat. <laughs> <laughs> the non-cheating boat's like, I don't want you. Or just in the ocean. <laughs> Go drown. Yeah. Isn't that funny? That's how they see it. Yeah. All right. This next question is from L as in the letter. L, it, it works. L as in the letter. Yeah. Because there absolutely. is an L. Yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> Dear Shandy, I, 29 female, you can call me L, have been dating my boyfriend, 27 male, you can call him Nate, for about a year. Two nights ago, I learned that he cheated on his first girlfriend five separate times, like full on had sex with all five girls. I feel very disturbed by this, given this- Wait, say that again? (laughs) Yeah, this is one of those questions where it's like, you can call me L as in the letter. Um, The person in question's name is Nate Johnson Mitchell. (laughs) Oh, is that the part you're caught up with? No, no, no. The part I'm caught up with, obviously, is the five uh, yeah, yeah, cheating yeah. things. But I'm just saying, like, it would be funny if someone wrote in clearly oh, yeah, as anonymous, but oh, totally God. outed the person. Oh, my God. That reminds me of one time we saw on, it was like on a van or something or a small truck. Do you remember this? Oh, it's a divorce thing? No, it someone got one of those, like, car billboard things, like, basically one of those things you see on a cab. But it was this big, huge sign that was like so and so is a cheating right, right. bitch and it like had a close up of her face. Yeah, it was unbelievable. It was like I guess like a that very, should be a crime. I it, think. it was a very vengeful thing to yeah. have made, but oh my God, I wow. saw that and I was that like spite. Can you imagine driving around New York City? Wow. What it takes to get to that point. Yeah. Talk about two wrongs don't make a right. I that is whew. that's the ultimate two wrongs. Cause like I believe that this woman cheated on him. But what he's doing to well, in my opinion is like Well, that's how people get murdered. This is why oftentimes revenge is something you should never think about. Oh, revenge totally. is always the wrong call. Oh, so it ne- true. no one wins. So true. Unless you know, sometimes <laughs> once in a while you get a really I mean it is just perfect. But it's gotta be funny. No, you have to be you have to get revenge silently. Cold. Cold and silently and like long term. Long, uh, 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 once again, another saying that is 100% true. Revenge is a dish best served cold. You know, growing up, my mom was known in the family for this. That, like, It was like a running joke that my mom will forgive, but she never forgets. <laughs> <laughs> we were all like, ooh. 
Okay. I feel very disturbed by this given the severity of the cheating and betrayal, but I'm not sure how much to attribute to age and immaturity since this happened when he was 18 and 19 years mm. old. Some background on Monday night, we were watching Charity's season of The Bachelorette. Uh-oh. And I thought about how Charity and Brayden had connected over both having been cheated on in the past. I was about to ask Nate whether he had ever been cheated on, but at the last second decided to ask if he had ever cheated. He tells me that he cheated on his first girlfriend, let's call her Winona. (laughs) They started dating in high school and were together for a few years. They had a pretty tumultuous relationship where he would become very jealous and she would do things that would provoke his jealousy and the relationship would be on and off and overall was pretty unhealthy. He cheated on her twice in high school and three times in his freshman year of college. With the different five different girls? Yeah, but all cheating on the same girlfriend. Five different girls. Yeah, wow, and he had a, full-blown sex with all five of them. a healthy months. amount of cheating. It's a healthy amount of cheating. <laughs> he never told Winona about any of them, and she never found out. Mm. He said that he cheated to, in a way, prove his masculinity to himself and that he could still get girls. He said he never wants to be in a relationship like that again, but I countered that any relationship can have bad times and you need to take responsibility for how you reacted to the situation. Totally agree. After that relationship, he started meditating daily, reading about different Eastern philosophies, and still does this as a daily practice. Sounds good. This is another example of of, of it may be better to be once a cheater, always a cheater, than never a cheater, and maybe one day you'll discover cheating. I kind of wish he had told his girlfriend. I kind of do too, but like the fact that she never see no evil, hear no evil. I mean, in the end, they were eighteen. Well, they also it sounds in the end like they were terrible for each other. Yeah, I I honestly think she may be better off not knowing. It's like it's just it was a stupid relationship. It wasn't ever meant to be. Yeah, it definitely sounds like a stupid relationship. Uh, Yeah, and this relationship, oh my god, stupid. And she's gonna be damaged for life because of this. She's always gonna have this, you know, like oh, I was cheated on. Uh, You know, I've been victimized by cheating like let her let her free just just no need to tell her mm, that. interesting he feels that he is a much different person now than he was then he also is not very interested in people's pasts and prefers to make judgments based on how they act in the present i feel that knowing someone's past is useful for understanding what made them who they are in the present mm-hmm. additional context i trust him in our relationship right now we share our locations with each other which he initiated by sharing his location indefinitely with me first you're laughing <laughs> It's just, it's just funny. <laughs> What's funny, Andy? You're I, snickering. I, it, it, it's a funny thing. Like it, there's something mildly passive aggressive about sharing location oh. like, or, or sort of wanting to share. Location. Oh, when I share my location with you, is it passive? No, not, be, not when we need to coordinate where uh, we're meeting somewhere. Oh. I'm not asking you like you go out with your friends and I'm like, share your location. You have access to my location at all times. I know, but I don't, I choose not to use it. I just feel like when you say, oh, we should share locations, it should be for logistical reasons. That's oh, all I'm saying. Oh, I see. Not to keep tabs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I just have nothing to hide. Yeah, so like why, keeping tabs. You know, what, you know what that is? The person who needs to keep tabs on somebody else has either been traumatized by cheating, which is not good. Uh-huh. Or has cheated. Or has cheated. Yeah. Most likely has cheated. <laughs> She followed suit a couple days later. This happened early in our relationship. I also know the password to his phone and he knows mine. We share them for utility reasons, like when someone wants to change the music, etc. He lives, he leaves. Or when she wants to doom scroll his texts for a girl. (laughs) He leaves his phone around the apartment unattended and does not do anything shady. His parents divorced when he was 13 because his dad cheated on his mom. Mm. Mm, that is additional context Mm. my interpretation and questions i feel very shaken by the severity of what he did i worry that if we were together long term that he may cheat again if things aren't as good as they are now i also feel that my true character has not changed that much over my life so this makes it harder for me to believe that he can be that different i've heard andy say that high school relationships don't count bingo (laughs) but does it count if he did something this bad I am also concerned that he didn't share this sooner and I had to ask the direct question. I don't like looking back on past conversations and feeling like something was being hidden from me. Is this its own cause for concern or is this reasonable to not share unless directly asked? I thought you'd like how this fits like a puzzle piece with the previous oh, question. Yeah. Yeah. Overall, are these grounds for breaking up? When looking for a long-term slash life partner, I want to trust someone will be faithful through thick and thin. Thank you for taking the time to read this. I love your podcast and really trust both of your opinions. So I am looking forward to hearing your take. Warmly, L. Mm, it's a lot of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> <Press> space? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Squarespace. <laughs> That's how excited you get when we're going to talk about Squarespace, Andy. Because let's be real, we all live our lives now in that square space. We do. And we have to. Yeah. And if you have to do something, why not do it the best you can? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Motivational speaker today. I yes. like that. But it's true. Today, we all live in that square space. Everything is online. And, you know, when people still have a hard copy business card, which you, by the way, have. I think I it's do. cute. I think that's nice and all. But you know what people really want to know? is what your URL is. Where can I see what you're up to, the reviews of whatever product you're selling, testimonials or an actual portfolio of your work. You need a place to put it all. A URL is now the front of your store. If you don't have a really good website, you're basically making the front of your store look like it's the front of like a waste disposal company. Oh, or about- not a good way, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I mean, I know there are some really good waste disposal companies. Seriously though, if you were to go to a restaurant Let's say it's the best food in the world. If your storefront doesn't look good, not many people are going to come. So imagine if you're doing that to yourself, you're shooting yourself in the foot by having either no website or a crappy looking one. And by the way, I've recently, not because I chose to, but because I had to, because Mm -hmm. someone did this for me, I had to use another competitor. Yes. I have been cursing. Uh Uh-huh. The designer. Yeah. I've been saying, why didn't you use Squarespace? Why do I have to deal with this? Uh It's a nightmare and there's nobody to talk to. I've been hearing about it because we live under the same roof. And every single time I try to help you, I'm like, say in Squarespace, I could have done it like this. Or it would have been really fast. And that's super annoying. (laughs) Okay, so let's quickly talk features because Squarespace is famous for their features. They have so many. On top of all these gorgeous templates where you can just plug and play your information, your imagery, they really have a feature for everything. You can be scheduled online through a calendar. You can have e-commerce. You can sell product online. You can do mailing lists. The list is endless. So go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Shandy for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Shandy to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So Andy, I was thinking the other day about how much more confident I am just walking out of the house without makeup on. I'm sure you've noticed that. I thought, honestly, mainly it was because of the pandemic. But I realized that we started our podcast in 2020 and one of our earliest sponsors was Apostrophe. And that's when I was connected via Apostrophe to a board certified dermatologist who prescribed me what I now use, which is my prescription tretinoin with 4% niacinamide. And I honestly think my skin took a real like uptick to the point where I feel okay with walking out of the house without even just a base layer. I don't think I put those two together, but I really think apostrophe has been a huge part in my confidence in my bare, bare skin. Well, that was a lot to take in. (laughs) So apostrophe is your destination for prescription strength skincare, oral and topical, while never having to leave the comfort of your sofa. You fill out their online consultation, you take selfies of your skin, and you type out what your skincare concerns are. Those could be acne, they could be aging, fine lines, wrinkles, all the things. And then a board-certified dermatologist will review your information and then prescribe you something if they feel you need it. And then this is the best part. You don't have to physically go to the pharmacy to do that, just like you didn't have to physically go to the dermatologist. It gets sent to your door. Why would you not do this? Give me a reason. Give me a reason. (laughs) Write in. Tell us why. Well, I think, honestly, a big deterrent for people is all that effort. Going to the dermatologist, going to the pharmacy. It is daunting. No, I'm saying, why wouldn't you use a positive? I know, I know. All I'm (laughs) saying... What are you telling them? I Yeah, I agree. I guess what I'm saying is I agree. Okay. I, think, I think we've said enough that you, they understand you agree with me. That's, that's a given. And I would be remiss if we did not add that it's not just for the face. They also treat all sorts of acne. Including... Chest, knee, back, knee, butt, knee. Exactly. It's like coming too soon. <laughs> So we have a very special deal for our audience. The Shandies get your first visit with an apostrophe provider for a mere $5. It's unbelievable. When you go to apostrophe.com slash Shandy and use promo code Shandy at sign up, that is a savings of $15. And this offer is only available to our listeners. To get started, just go to apostrophe.com slash Shandy and click get started. Then use our code Shandy at sign up and you'll get your first visit for only $5. And we thank apostrophe for sponsoring the podcast. Okay. So, I mean, this really does feel like a puzzle piece with the previous one. Yeah, really. There's a theme. I do think that his transgressions are way worse than B is in the letter. Was it B? Way worse. But 
he was okay. There's a lot of a lot of things going yeah, on yeah, here. Yeah. This, this is not many black ways and white. To, yeah. As as always, cheating questions are not black and white. Totally, as people like to make them sometimes. Yeah. So, number one, high school. Technically speaking, it doesn't count. But in this situation, he may have. You know, it's like it's one of those crimes where, like, like, like sometimes a 13 year old commits murder, and it's like, oh, he's 13. He just 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 put him in juvie for two years and be oh. done with it. And sometimes a 13 year old commits murder, and you're like, charge him as an adult. Uh-huh. Like this is this is he committed killed like 15 people in yeah. high school. That's that's he he got he got to be locked away. Okay. But I think that this this kind of the level of cheating may verge into the being charged as an adult because of the the, the numerous uh, infractions. Okay, so I, I just want to add, I think that this is one where you charge, uh, you, they go to juvie because all, I know it's it's looks really bad. Cheating five times. All is, one partner. Yes! yes. Oh my God, you got in my mind. Yeah. It's all one partner and it was clearly a terrible... Yes. You are absolutely right. As a matter of fact, I hereby Judge Levine is determining that well, this is not how a judge speaks. <laughs> I don't know why I'm saying that. It's like, that, a, like that, a town crier. No, the judge Nate is going to juvie. Yeah, the judge is like, I sent it to you, Mr. Nate, to uh, two years of juvenile detention and watch yourself, Mr. Oh, young yeah. man, watch yourself. For me, if he had cheated on five different girlfriends once each, so the same amount of cheating. Absolutely. This was a terrible relationship. Yeah. Look, I'm giving him the benefit no, he, of the doubt. No, this is so the kind of relationship that should have just ended before yes. the, like he, right before cheating the first you know, time, he should have been like, this is a you, sign, like I'm out. He was young enough to not know how to end a relationship. He's like, oh, cheating is the way to end it, right? And we're not defending him because I, I agree no. with her that, you know, you need to be responsible for your own actions, right? And yeah. I think that, he did a very bad thing, and it's definitely this is red flag territory. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, we're not pretending this isn't red no, flag it's territory. A, it's a bad, a bad set of cheating events. Yeah. However, this is very different from the last question in that sense. Yes. Okay. However, <laughs> he is now meditating. Mm. As a result, <laughs> he's meditating. meditating. It's That's all it. good. <laughs> Clean slate, baby. It's like converting to like Christianity in prison. Like, oh, okay, parole. Oh, wait, does that happen? Yeah, but people do that all the time. Islam, people convert. They find God when they get to prison. I mean, I'm not just saying anything's wrong about finding God in prison. I'm yeah. just saying that that happens a lot and it doesn't help. They still don't, they get denied parole. No one cares that they converted. Okay. But, but they care about good deeds. Uh, if they, you know, they run a church group in prison and, mm-hmm. and help a lot of people and counsel people and maybe, you know, create art and, you know, help kids. <laughs> I don't know. And then and this is completely off topic. My point is, is that he committed a very bad juvenile crime, but it is a juvenile crime. Mm. And he has repented. He is meditating. He's studying Eastern meditation. He's aware of it. He's doing this because of the, he's, he's internalizing. He's like, this was a bad thing. I don't ever want to do this again. Mm. I give him a, he, he is paroled. I've given him parole. He's out. He's a free man. And I believe that because he is so aware of the situation, I think he has as much likelihood of not doing it again as someone who never cheated like that in their lives. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I think five times is a lot. It is a lot. It's a lot. One like this, person, though, you said yeah, it yourself. You know, I, yeah, I think that it's really important to, to differentiate the two. If, again, High school, if, one person. <laughs> If it had been, like I said, five different girls that he's dating, yes. cheating once on each of them, that Bad. is like bad. That's to me breakup material. That's life. That's life without parole. That's Throw once a cheater, always a cheater. That's like bad. Not holding back on the yeah. cheating. Fool me once, eh, fool me twice, eh, <laughs> fool me three times. This is like like the way George Bush said it. It's oh. even worse. It's like, it makes no, it has nothing to do what with the What did he say again? He said he was talking about Iraq. I think. Okay. Or he was like, fool me once. And, and, and then he completed, that's where he lost. He was like, oh, I, I bit off more than I could chew. He didn't know what he was going to say. Then he's like, shame on me. <laughs> and he got, he got there. He got there. And then he said, fool me twice. I ain't getting fooled again. <laughs> <laughs> it's the greatest. I, I actually, it made me like him more. A little bit is what I'm saying. <laughs> Oh, that's great. I can think of a lot of people who would totally break up with this guy based on this. You know what breaking up with this guy based on this is like? It's like saying, uh, there's if you have a favorite restaurant. Okay. It's just, you love this restaurant. Yeah. And then there's one time you, you, you had a salad at some other place and you got food poisoning. Okay. And it was rough. Yeah. 
And and they and you like the salads at your favorite restaurant. And so on your birthday, you go to this restaurant and you're eating there the whole time. You're worried about food poisoning. Yeah. Ruins the whole meal. You're worried about food poisoning just because of something else that happened somewhere else a while ago. Mm -hmm. And that's not the way to live. Oh, yeah, because you had romaine. Because you had romaine. Yeah. Romaine. Oh, the dreaded romaine. <laughs> yeah. I love romaine. Every time I eat romaine, every time I'm like, eh, is this going to be the time? Uh, I love romaine. Even though you never even got sick off romaine. Okay, let's take it easy there. Okay. <laughs> Knock on wood. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay. That okay, makes but, sense. Okay. That's like me with muscles. Oh, yeah. You never eat muscles. Never again. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've been very shaky about muscles ever since. I respect that decision. But my point is, is you shouldn't not go to your favorite restaurant and enjoy the meal and see where it takes you because of some incident that happened a while ago somewhere else. With the romaine. Yeah. This guy is in a good relationship with her. There's a good. Well, is there any suggestion that this isn't a good relationship? I kind of wish she had talked a bit more about their current relationship. Because there isn't really a ton. She says they've been dating for about a year and she found out two nights ago. I do think a year is a long time into the relationship to find this out. What if they never had a discussion about cheating? What if it never came up naturally? Is it his job to bring it up and be like, hey, by the way, I, I had a girlfriend in high school that I cheated on a bunch with. Mm. I think if it comes up naturally, definitely reveal it. Mm. I, I, I don't know. I, I just don't I, think... You know, he could have lied. He could have lied. Meaning he may have lied. I'm, no, I'm saying in this moment with this conversation, I feel confident that he didn't lie about this story because it's a very unflattering story. Why would you say that's the craziest lie in the world? Unless he's changing the time frame. Like the actual girlfriend he cheated on five times was like his last girlfriend. Oh. But that's unlikely. Or he actually cheated 10 times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Se yeah, seven to 15 times. <laughs> Splitting hairs at that point. I just think honesty is should always be noticed. If not rewarded, it should be acknowledged. Absolutely. And he, he was honest. He easily, a year in, could have been like, I'm just not telling her because I don't want her to be freaked out. You know, Absolutely. like, I know that this is unflattering The devil you know. Mm, the devil you know. I just, just to me, honesty trumps all. All. It's that, it's the rock over um, scissor. <laughs> well, I guess paper takes rock. So yeah, I think paper is really yeah, the bad best analogy. one. Yeah. Is paper the best one? Or are you just saying that, that that makes no sense? That's like saying X is better than O in tic-tac-toe. I just, I like how paper defeats rock. I think it's a clever way to defeat yeah, a rock. Scissor defeats paper. Yeah, but a scissor is like a man-made, oh, I guess paper is also man-made. <laughs> this is one of the worst arguments I've ever heard in my life. You're taking all sides I, in rock, paper, scissors. All I'm saying is, is that when I play rock, paper, scissors and I win with a paper, I feel very proud of myself well, more good. so than I when I win with scissors or rock. This is good to know for next time we play rock, paper, scissors. Oh. I know what I'm going with. Well, maybe I'll remember this conversation and I'm definitely more likely to remember this conversation than you. And maybe I'll therefore not use paper. Oh my God, this is really inception level. So if you're more likely to remember this conversation than me, which is true. Yes. And your favorite thing to use is paper. Yeah, and I would have thought to that use I scissors, should use scissors. But in instead I use rock. So what should I remember to use next time we play, <laughs> assuming that I'm forgetting this you and you're remembering You should just remember it. that I love using paper. I'm going to use paper. No, right. that's a bad call. <laughs> Okay, where were we? I lost my way. We have to extract ourselves from this. Okay, so we talked about rock, paper, scissors. You were talking about, oh, we were talking about tic tac toe. I said it's like saying you like X over O. Oh, no, that was in relation to the rock, paper, scissors conversation. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going deeper into the We've never future. not gotten ourselves out of We're going to get these. back. We can okay. do it. Okay, you, okay, okay. okay. I, I said, oh, oh, it's about the honesty. Honesty trumps all. And I said, yeah, 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 good, good, good. Woo, oh, woo. Yeah. Okay, good job, good job. Okay, I, I'm not saying that honesty makes up for wrongdoings in the past. I well, kind of wish that she'd just given more about her current relationship with the guy. Yeah, I want to know if it's a good relationship. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to assume it's a good relationship but she didn't talk about it. You'd think that she would have talked about it. <sighs> Maybe not. Maybe the person in the bad relationship doesn't talk about the bad things and the person in the good relationship talks about the good things. Yeah, she seems really focused on this and not on the turmoil of like losing X, Y, Z that makes him such an amazing I, partner. I feel like if she's focused on this enough to write into a podcast. And not include a single sentence about a how, what a loving partner he is today. I have two theories and I don't know which one's right. One is she's been traumatized by cheating in the past. Yeah. 
And two is there's other cracks in this relationship we don't know about. They're either or. They they may be both, but most likely one or the other. Yeah. And we always have to remember his dad cheated on his mom when he was 13. They're divorced because of that. The sins of the father. I got a lot of good sayings today. Yeah, you you really do. This is complicated. This is a complicated one. Yeah. I think on the surface, I want to be like, well, it was a stupid, obviously toxic lesson yeah. learning. Sure. You know, shaping who you are and what you're looking for in a relationship. High school girlfriend. It was meaningless. It sounds like it was just a disaster. However, the girlfriend never found out. He was never really faced. To, faced with it that to me gives me a little pause i know you think the girlfriend doesn't need to know and i agree the girlfriend doesn't need to know but for him he never really got the i don't know the comeuppance that i feel a cheater who really gets caught or who really has to confess or who's really racked no, by this is guilt a very good point yeah he never like and i know he's meditating now <laughs> well he never did the time he yeah. never got to convert to islam in prison <laughs> yeah, he never did the time. He was never faced with how much he hurt someone that he loved. Can, can we say this is a conditional red flag where he was, a, a, as the judge, I remember I, I didn't give him an adult sentence. Yeah. I sent him to juvie. Yeah. And I said, one more, you, you screw up one more time, son. Yeah. And you're going to the big house. Oh, totally. Can we just give him that and say that, yes, he's on a, on a, on a tight leash, yeah. but given the benefit of the doubt? Yes. Is that, is that totally. okay? Totally. So with that said, Elle, what's our advice to her? I, I think on the surface- Enjoy the meal, but just don't eat romaine. <laughs> <laughs> she says, are these grounds for breaking up? I think no. unto themselves, no. No. Absolutely, positively, 100% no. But- But- don't eat the romaine. I think she should have a sit down conversation and get him like be like, will you ever do that again? This is really bothering me. I think that he needs some belated comeuppance. He needs to realize that he could have revealed this sooner. I think a year in is a long time to I know it didn't come up naturally. I think we differ a bit on this. I I really don't think it's required reading that mm. you cheated on someone multiple times in high school. I just don't I don't quite get there. I no, I, I respect I, it, mm. but I myself I wouldn't point. do it. I, I would point. not bring it up. As a matter of fact, I can't say for certain there wasn't some girl in high school that I cheated on a couple of times. I, I'll tell you now. You know what, Charlene? What? I think there was a girl in high school I may have cheated on. Okay. How do you feel about that? Are you I upset? Mean, are you, you going to divorce were, me? You were a child. Yeah, exactly. Now, so you, you put yourself in, in the shoes and then it doesn't, the shoe that fits fine. <laughs> Wait, is that what it is? Yeah. She fits okay. It's a comfortable shoe. <laughs> it's a sketcher. Yeah, it's an sketcher. echo. A, a, a Mephisto. It's a su- It's a crack. It's a crack. <laughs> Okay, have we answered this? I still haven't of? figured out Crocs. Why you wear those? I feel like there's there's an act of defiance happening there. Is that what it is? When you wear a Croc, you're like, I don't care what you think. I think it's antisocial behavior wearing Crocs. <laughs> the point is, is now that I did that to you, you realize that who cares? Mm. But we have a great relationship. Do they have a great yes, relationship? Yes, that's what we're missing. I don't know. We're missing the sense of trust. I think that's what, okay, we're, we're taking a really long time to get to our answer for this, which is trust. The reason why your past cheating doesn't bother me and my past cheating doesn't bother you is because we trust each other implicitly. Yes. It's laughable to imagine that rearing its head in our relationship. And all he can do to earn her trust, which he does, he, he is now kind of in the, in the debt column with her trust wise. He did this thing. She's a human being. She naturally has some distrust mm -hmm. for the rest of his life or at least for a few years before they can put this behind them, he has to earn it. Uh -huh. He has to not cheat and not do anything shady. And she has to be like, oh, wow, okay, this guy is all right. He, This was a thing that happened in high yeah. school. I'm not worried about it anymore. I think, personally, there's two things here. One is, I forgot her name. It's been a long L. time. L. L, you should examine the other parts of your relationship. Yes. Be honest with yourself. Is this a really healthy, good relationship? Uh -huh. If the answer to question one is yes, then I think you should give the full benefit of the doubt to the second issue of the cheating. You know, monitor. Remember, he's uh -huh. on parole. He's he's out. The yeah. judge gave him a light sentence. Monitor. See if there's any problems. And if there isn't for, for quite some time, just enjoy the good relationship. Enjoy the restaurant. 
if the rest of your relationship has problems and there's other things that don't have anything to do with this cheating that are wrong, that you're not happy with, you're unsatisfied, you guys fight a lot, I don't know, something, then this is really a red herring. Mm-hmm. Analyze that before you you're, analyze that's this. That's such a great answer. I think that trust is at the core of this. And I'm not getting from this email either way whether or not she actually trusts him deep down. Like if this information about his past completely shatters her trust in him, then I refuse to believe that she was comp- like all in 100% yeah. trusted him wholeheartedly. I just I just don't. There's a certain level of trust that two human beings can have in a relationship that is so overpowering and all encompassing that nothing committed no 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 infractions committed in the past can override it uh-huh. and i don't think that's here yeah i think if it's bodies under the floorboards serial killer that's different absolutely that, that is <laughs> that is a fine point okay this one's complicated i'm sure people will disagree with us on this as they tend to when we talk about cheating but yeah. there you know there's a, a silent majority i would almost say yeah of people who agree with us and who just don't comment yeah all the cheaters <laughs> <laughs> they're like i would comment to agree but then i would reveal yeah. that i've cheated <laughs> <laughs> they're just sitting there like <laughs> Okay, Al, good luck. Hopefully this gives you food for thought. Not Roman. All right, this next question, ooh, is also from L as in the letter. Wow. A back-to-back L. the odds. What did we have? We had an E, we had an L, another L, and a B. B. Bell, we finally spelled a word. Oh, my God. <laughs> Dear Shandy, I, 37 female, tried to break up with my boyfriend, 31 male, 10 months into our relationship, but he was very upset, felt like the breakup was coming out of nowhere, wouldn't go easily, and finally revealed that he had just bought tickets for us to take a trip to a city in a neighboring state to surprise me. I would check the date of that purchase. (laughs) By that point, I let myself feel guilted out of going through with the breakup and justified staying with him by telling myself that he was really fighting for our relationship. Overall, the relationship has been good, fun, and passionate but increasingly the red flags that prompted me to initiate that first breakup attempt are making me realize that two years in now, he's not someone I would feel responsible being with long term. For reference, the biggest red flags are anger issues and financial instability. We also live two hours apart in bad traffic, so one of us would have to move if we got more serious and his career means it would not be him. I struggle with conflict avoidance, so up until that first breakup attempt, we had never had a fight And I had never expressed that I had any issues with his behavior. I can totally understand how he felt like the attempted split came out of nowhere. Uh. Also, admittedly, during that conversation, I tried to be kind about why I felt like we should break up and chalked it up to distance and logistics. Nice. (laughs) A real cowardly breakup. (laughs) Not to the concerns I felt over what can be best described as his adult temper tantrums, usually over things like waiting in line or forgetting to buy something at the store. (laughs) I respect that. (laughs) I've recently been trying to be more clear about expressing my concerns to him, but I haven't been brave enough to be really explicit about how I'm feeling, i.e. his behavior makes me feel like I can't rely on him to be a good teammate and I shouldn't uproot my life for him. Because I haven't been completely blunt, I'm not sure that he's really processing that there are issues. I don't want to blindside him again, but I also know I don't see a long-term future with him. My question is, how should I best communicate this to him? In reading my email back. I want to give myself the advice that there's no nice way to break up with him. And because I've already made the decision, I should just tell him instead of trying to prepare him and get my head around the fact that I am going to hurt him. However, I'm still hoping that you have some sage advice for how to make this easier on both of us. This is the first time I've ended a serious relationship and I'm dreading it. Thank you for any wisdom you can share. I love the podcast and appreciate the humor, terrific insight, and great singing that you bring to my life each week, L. Thank you, L. Oh, and she says, P.S., if it's relevant, I don't plan to have kids, so I haven't felt the same urgency about finding a forever person that I might have otherwise. Mm, okay. 37. And he is 31. You know what I would compare this this question to? Let, let's say Dear Shandy is, is the universe of Q&As. <laughs> okay. This question is the singularity inside a black hole. (laughs) That was the most Andy thing, most Andy analogy ever. Mm. Okay, go on. It cannot be told. It cannot be discovered. No one knows. No one knows the answer. No one knows what's inside there. It just 
you have to do it. I don't know how to tell you how to break up. I don't know even know how to like begin to tell you. Uh, it's just not answerable. It's on you. Because breaking up is hard. Break because breaking up is hard to do. So I sang in jazz choir in high school. Oh. And I sang, I'm pretty sure tenor part because there weren't enough guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cute. Uh, and yeah, we harmonized this and, and sang and competed with it and stuff. It doesn't sound like that fun a song. It's a fun song. I'll find it for okay. you. Oh, that's anyway. cute. Yeah, that's nice. Right? It's yeah, nice. It's good. It's, it's good. I, I like mean, it. you know what it is? It's true. It's true. No one says this is how you break up. There's no song like that. It's like, so the first thing you do <laughs> when you break up with someone... <laughs> Is prepare them for weeks and tell them the problems you have with them. But lie about the real things that are the reason. You tell pretend them things that are almost the reason. You pretend that it's logistics. <laughs> Say that it's you and not them. Yeah. Okay, song. so breaking up is hard to do. It's impossible to tell someone how to break up. Everyone needs to be broken up with differently. No breakup is perfect. If you tell them the absolute truth, it's bad. If you lie to them, it's bad. If you go somewhere in the middle, it's bad. Everything is bad. It's it's like it's like asking someone how to die. Mm. Like it's all bad. It's just I don't know. Figure it out when you get there. Oh, there's a song by Andrew Lloyd Webber that goes, "Tell me on a Sunday, oh, and take me to a zoo." Uh, that's got chimpanzees. Tell me on a Sunday, please. Oh, about getting take, broken up with? Yeah, take me to a park that's oh, covered with trees. It's so sad. Yeah, tell me. It's so sad. God, Weber. I hope there'll <laughs> never be another one like him. Okay, I totally agree with you that it's hard to do. And separately, I kind of want to analyze her conflict aversion because I think that is the bigger issue, because I think we know that this is going to end. She's got to stick with it, Elle. That's a, That's what I wanted to say. Yeah. My only advice, the only thing I can tell you, the same way a physicist says, I don't know what's in there, but I have a feeling that, you know, these are the things that happen right at in the In a edge. black hole. Yeah. <laughs> Make it clean yeah. and decisive. Mm. Don't waffle. Don't say maybe one day, yes, there's a chance. I don't know. I have to think about mm -hmm. it. Just be like, it is over. It is over. It is over. Yeah, and also remember that to give someone honesty is to give them respect. Like if you respect this guy that you've been with for 10 months, what you're telling him is really going to help him in the long run, honestly. I, dr I genuinely believe that. Absolutely. That's the thing about conflict avoidance. When people really yeah. avoid it, they're not thinking enough about how we could actually not only help the relationship, but help the other person. Because sometimes what you need is the awareness the awareness that you're doing this thing, you know, we need, we all need to be sort of, I don't know, like shaped by our environment and by like the little dings we get through life. And those dings yeah. really do shape us, Absolutely. right? Like a, like a stone in, in a, in a Creek. <laughs> For some reason, I can't I'll pretend I didn't say oh, yeah. that. I don't, I don't think of a stone as a, in a creek. It's getting dinged all that oh, much. Really? It's more okay. about water, just shaping it by water. Yeah. If anything, it's the opposite of getting dinged. What? It's getting smoothed. Yeah, that's okay. I meant like it gets dinged to the point where it's smoothed. Hmm. So you're saying that there's all sorts of microscopic dings happening on a stone in a river? Yeah. I think it's more of just a... It's interesting. Where does a ding become a smoothing? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Okay, my point being... Don't think that you're doing him favors by lying to him about like, of course, like within reason, like you don't have to tell him that he sucks and all the things wrong with him. You can do that, too. It's just said nothing. Yeah, Whether but, but you tell him he sucks or he's wanna, great, doesn't matter. You want to mitigate hurt. But I'm more talking about the conflict than the actual breaking up at okay, this point, just because right. I think that this she hasn't given him the chance to even attempt to change the things that she deems red flags. Kim having an adult temper tantrum, that is annoying. The anger management, blah, blah, blah. I, I, uh... I'm not saying that that's something he could snap his fa fingers and fix, but think about the p what you could get out of that bit of conflict instead of assuming that it's just going to go terribly. You know what I mean? Yeah, like you I, could let him know and he might respond better than you ever imagined. And I, then you could I, become closer after. I it. couldn't agree more. I think that maybe this isn't a breakup. Oh, but yeah. I'm not saying that it's not a breakup, honestly. It, it might be a breakup, but give it a shot. Give no, it a shot. I think I know. I, I really give don't the mean conversation. <laughs> it's 
not what I meant at all. Oh, you're, I thought you're, you're I, I saying... I think this needs to break up. I'm saying for the future. I think she knows oh. this guy is not her guy for your future relationships where maybe you aren't as sure that the person's not the one, that when something does bother you, maybe... Uh, don't be so afraid of the conflict absolutely because you really you. will come out on the other side with a better understanding of each other and whether that means you're together or you're not you have the information and, and you know what's you know what else you should always this is this is going to sound terrible but you should always be in relationships as if you're preparing for a breakup Ooh. So, and, I, and I mean that I know that sounds bad, but I'm yeah. explain. You want to point out the things that are bothering you mm. and you don't want to avoid them. You don't like, oh, God, I'm just yeah. going to keep it inside. I'm just going to. And then then you get these situations where the guy's like, what, what are you breaking up with? Yeah, me? Where the hell makes, did this come which from? makes it so much no. harder. Right. Imagine if every time they're in the grocery store, she's like, why are you doing that? Why are you acting like a baby? This is annoying me. Yeah, yeah. Stop it. Uh-huh. And he kept doing it and doing it. And then when you're like, I'm breaking up with you because you keep crying yeah, about yeah, yeah. grapes in the grocery store. <laughs> He's not going to be out They're of the blue. They're not firm enough. Yeah. That's I mean, the only reason you would cry honestly, about grapes. Honestly, I have had an internal temper tantrum about a, a soft grape. Oh, yeah. Or the ones like at the top of the bag, they're firm. And then when you got deeper in, you realized Ugh. they were all soft you know and what, seedy. You know what? There's two types of grape farmers. One is a good person. <laughs> one is an evil piece of shit. So, L, the surface level answer here is... Commit to the breakup. It's hard to do. We cannot give you a handbook on how to do it. It's famously hard to the point where they've written songs about breaking up being hard to do and also about how t- you want to be broken up with because it's so difficult. Yeah. So yeah. welcome to, you know, you'll be part of a club. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and A club that we are both a part of, actually. Yeah. And they, it's a very scarring. I've... Sometimes you're forced. Let me tell you, I've been forced to not be a nice person. Absolutely. Because it was the only way to make it land. You know what? I have never in my life had a good break. I have never done it well. Mm. I've never, and I don't, and I hope I never become a master at breaking up with people. I hope, I mean, obviously. (laughs) And I have been broken up with exactly one time well. And you know what they did? And and it's also, it was early on. It wasn't that, it wasn't so deep in that I was like, Was it within six months? It was was in the six month period, just six months. And you know what it was like? She's like, yeah, I'm just not, I'm not feeling this. I'm not really like this, this, I'm not, I don't think, I don't think we're, we're right for each other. And I was like, thank you. That is exactly right. And I'm not saying that works. Again, this is like, now they're like, oh, you do have an answer. No, I don't. <laughs> that just worked for me because I was like, you know what? I didn't want her to tell me things that I was doing wrong. And I didn't want her to lie to me. Yeah. And what she said was just true. You can always get away with that. Like that's, that is always true non-specific the person doesn't feel terrible about themselves yeah. if you want to know my advice if you really can get away with it be like we're just not right for each other i don't feel it i want to end it that that's a way to do it <laughs> if you want to know if you want to you know generic Is that the advice. next part in the song of how to break yeah, up yeah, yeah. <laughs> number three say that you're just yeah, yeah, yeah. not feeling it <laughs> breaking up is hard unless you just say i don't want to be with you anymore well you know what's interesting is that's super honest yeah, that's, it's lacking it's, specificity, but it's honest, and and it's just cold enough to be decisive. So, L, first, just commit. You are gonna hurt him. Breaking no. up's hard to do. And second, you know, maybe analyze why it was such a shock for him. It's because you yeah. never brought anything to the surface. You know, in in answering this question, I think I've discovered some of the secrets of the black hole: decisive ambiguity. Ooh. Yeah, that's what you should do. And you have to just be okay with that ambiguity. You have to be okay with it. You have to just steal yourself and be like, I am going to just say, I'm not into this the same way. I'm not into a dish at my favorite restaurant. Yeah, and you know what? The decisiveness makes up for the ambiguity. Yes, this is definitely the over. The conviction. This is definitely over. This isn't a maybe. This isn't a one yeah. day. And by the way, if it is a one day, you still don't say that. Yeah, you yeah. don't say that. Then, yeah. <laughs> it's decisive. And it's just like, this is slightly distasteful to mm-hmm. me. I'm just not into this. Mm-hmm. Period. Yes. And then whoosh, off into the sunset. And then he follows <laughs> five million text messages. Then there's a lot of poems. He buys you gifts. <laughs> he starts talking to your friends. It's, you know, it's, you're going to have to deal with that no matter what. <laughs> Hopefully not. All right, Al, good luck. I do think you'll need it a bit just because breaking up is hard to do. Well, Andy, I think then that's a wrap for this q and A. It's kind of a tough one. The tough ones often are the ones that make me learn more about myself. Oh, totally. I mean, yeah. we learned about black holes. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I already know about black holes. I was talking about the breakup. <laughs> no, it's stuff. funny. Sometimes in answering a, a question, I remember something about myself or like like just now when I was talking about breaking up and how I've been forced to be a not nice person. Yeah. Like that, I've totally forgotten about that. Absolutely. But it consumed my life for many months of my life, really. You're committing that, murder. I've basically. been exactly where Elle has been. Yeah. It's no different than in Mice of Men when he had to shoot Lenny, his friend. Hmm. His best, he loved Lenny, he loved him so much, but he knew that Lenny was going to be attacked by the mob and his life was, it was going to be so bad and Lenny couldn't handle that. Hmm. So what did he do? He takes him out, tells him about the rabbits and the farm they're going to have, which is Lenny's dream. Hmm. And he puts a bullet on the back of his head. And that's what breaking up is. It's killing Lenny. Oh, God. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. Shall we? I mean, oh, we yeah. were supposed to be rapping. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's, let's rap. <laughs> did this improve your Monday? Uh, yes, despite the, the dour analogy. <laughs> okay. I, I feel I feel good. Okay. If you enjoyed what you heard today, you know what we will ask of you, and that is to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, follow us on Instagram and TikTok. Leave us Apple and Spotify. Podcast ratings and reviews. Tell your friends and generally do all the things you would do to support a podcast you enjoy. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on Dear Shandy. Bye-bye. <laughs>